Hi, this is Miles Maria, the soldier of Mary. Today, I want to talk about this whole stuff that is on a lot of prophecies, especially by Father Michel Rodrigue, about refuge, refugees, making refuges, stockpiling food, water, that kind of thing, at least for three months, and some people for three and a half years. It's not just him, there's some other so-called seers that have been saying this stuff. If you look on, I don't recommend looking on the websites, but let me, just my word for it, there's, there's quite a lot of people who are getting on this bandwagon right now who are saying, oh yeah, refugees, get loads of food. Um, and I remember back, I don't remember back in the 80s, but I do remember people telling me in the 80s this was happening as well, about getting beeswax candles and this kind of thing, stockpiling, ready for the three days of darkness, etc, etc. I want to look at this because it's a dangerous and evil lie. It's a dangerous and evil lie that's not in scripture, that's not in tradition, and is so contrary to Almighty God, it's unbelievable that Catholics, so-called Catholics, are promoting it. I would expect this from Protestants, but not Catholics. Let's look at something Father Michel said back in March. He said back in March, we should have a three-month supply of food consecrating our homes to the holy family this is going to be temporary refuge until the holy spirit guides you to a permanent refuge a three month supply of food and elsewhere i've read he wants you to have a three month supply of water as well and then after you have been taken from your temporary refuge you go to a permanent refuge the permanent refuge is a real physical place and some people are called to build those permanent refuges that you will stay in for three and a half years and so you're going to need you're going to need this because apparently again according to father michel there's going to be no electronic media in these permanent refuges there's going to be nuclear war there's going to be basically a, a two-thirds of humanity dying in those three and a half years that the refuges are um, in place and then there's going to be you know blah 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 anti antichrist comes afterwards antichrist then comes after that popes get killed masses stopped etc etc so again here's another thing telling us this is the account of being taken to the refuge father michelle says that after the three and a half months after the three three months or something you are then going to be led to a permanent refuge this one says six and a half weeks so that's interesting so he's got some inconsistency but maybe he's just saying three months supply of food i don't know for whatever reason and maybe just allowing for a little bit extra uh, in that earlier that earlier page so three months food and then you go to the permanent refuge which will be your permanent home you're going to be led there by an angel and other people chosen you know all the holy people basically all the holy people really seems like a certain number of holy people are going to be led to these refuges um and you're going to be safe in those refuge while the whole world gets destroyed almost the whole world gets destroyed and in a recent message you know this most recent message of michelle that was in uh, march regarding december 2021 he's still talking about refugees time of the refugees is coming etc for three and a half years this is coming countdown to the kingdom I have a summary and analysis of all father michelle's stuff it says here father michelle does not endorse the messages of any other alleged seers etc etc father michelle does does not advocate survivalism he is only encouraged having a few months of food. A few months of food on hand, out of prudence, that likely no one could argue with after COVID-19. Nor does he instruct his listeners to go and build physical refuges. He does say, however, that God has called certain people to build them, like Noah's Ark in his time. So, okay, so Count on the Kim is saying he doesn't want survivalism, just a few months of food, three months of food. That's survivalism. Three months of food is survivalism and that is not prudence that is not like a prudence to have three months supply of food in your house if you've seen what three months supply of food looks like and, and what it costs i'm going to get onto the cost part in a second because that's really important but it says here that that he does advocate advocate survivalism essentially because some people have to build have to build 
will be called, perhaps by Father Rodrigue, will be called to build physical refuges where people, large number of people, will need to stay for three and a half years. Okay, a little bit on costs. How much does it cost for four people to have three months supply of food? It looks like on prepping websites, you're looking about $2,000. $2,000 for three months supply of food, just for a, four people. And that's what Almighty God is asking of everybody in the world. In fact, in fact, according to Father Michel, that was required a year ago. Last year, September was when that three months was needed, but it didn't happen. So the three months is going to be needed for sometime after December this year now. I hope that your three month supply of food, if you bought it last year, is still OK. You see how evil this is. Everyone in the world that wants to survive will need three months supply of food. Is this really almighty God? And some people are needed to provide three and a half years supply of food if they are called to do so. And we can see an account of someone who was called to do so on this really interesting website from Rome. Really interesting article here about a journey to visit one of these physical refuges because father michel has encouraged people to build refuge certain people certain people who obviously are have a lot of money michel has asked them encouraged them to build big refuges and so this group this group who are friends with some of father michel's inner circle in south uh, california they go and track down one of these refuges which is basically a compound complete completely off the grid and it takes a lot of time to get there um, it's difficult to arrive there's a locked gate they manage to get through near to the refuge they see a faded statue of saint michael the archangel and this is when it's gonna the whole tone of this article is gonna be faded because Father Michel has been saying this refuges stuff for years. He's only been prominent on the internet in the last two years. But for years he's been saying this stuff to his inner circle and his followers. We could not help but notice how old and run down the cabins and mobile homes were. There is, there is uh, a young man who is some kind of construction worker that's in charge of looking after the refuge. He's a bit shaken about what they're doing there, how they got there, but they're able to convince him that they are friends of Father Michael, Michel Rodrigues, um, very influential parts of his circle. And the young man accepts them and he gives them a bit of a tour of the, of the, um, the compound. The gentleman ex 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 um, apologizes because of the strong stench of rotten beans that was coming from a warehouse cabin where they had stored dry foods, beans, rice, grains, nuts, been purchased only a few months ago. Unfortunately, for the last 10 years, ever since they began working in the refuge, because none of, the, none of the prophecies came to pass, they've had to keep throwing out food. It rots, they buy more, it rots because, you know, the prophecy of refuge, like I said, it's been out a long time for Father Michel, even though we've only come across it online in the last, you know, in the last two years. So this guy is obviously involved with working at this place, keeping it, maintaining it, is being employed by Father Michel. And there's a statue up there, and in the middle of the statue, not a statue, there's a chapel there. In the middle of the stat, in the chapel, there is an image, a large image of Father Michel himself kind of weird kind of weird there's an anecdote here about a homosexual guy that seems to be in the area seems to be involved in also looking after the compound and they're a bit scandalized by him and they think to themselves you know is father Michel's inner circle involved these homosexuals or something um and so they you know the conclusions of these visitors were that there's nothing holy about the refuge founded by father, by father michel it's basically a bunker an ugly bunker that was rotting because it's been there for 10 years and refuge never happens 
He's going to come down in history as a full prophet. That's true. He may be part of the morally perverse group also. So, you know, this, are, as you can see, actually on the, the right hand side, there's a lot of strange things on this website as a whole that I don't agree with. But this this sen this section here, this article here about Father Michel Rodrigue, this is this is excellent investigative journalism exposing the fact that there are real people who have already been led astray by father michelle's refuges prophecies do not become one of them do not become one of them by giving him money to build refuges in the hope that you're going to be led by your guardian angel to one of these refuges after the three months being in your own house you know there's other people that evalu have evaluated the whole refuges prophecy. Uh, Father Mark Mira, not Father Mark Miravale, has again said that this whole um, refuge thing, the idea of people being led to a refuge, leaving cars, property, cell phones behind, and spending three and a half years in complete confinement, Mark Miravale says this is completely anon an is a complete anomaly in prophecy in the writings of the saints in seers and miravale actually supports a lot of false visionaries he's very generous in what he supports but he still says michelle's um three and a half years living in cabins is completely crazy um and also i mean i was thinking to myself about it this has got the potential to divide families you know the husband of the family or the wife of the family wants to keep putting aside money for the refuge project maybe one person in the family says we're going to get a credit card and max out on the credit card because you know there's going to be an economic collapse free enough free two-thirds of the world's population is going to die so we'll get loads of money now so we can help finance a refuge and then we'll be okay uh, the refuge thing doesn't happen and you're left with loads of debt um this is this is so evil um okay now on to the theological consideration because countdown to the kingdom try to give a defense in responding to, to mark miravale they try and defend the idea that there are going to be physical refugees and we need physical refuges they acknowledge that Our Lady has said that the Immaculate Heart should be your refuge. But then afterwards they say, yeah, that's all nice, but what about physical refuges? And they they then kind of say, oh yeah, physical refuge, or oh, what does our priority need to be? Saving souls. Yeah, whoever saves seeks to save his life will lose it. Then they say, yeah, all that, well, all that, you know, none of that dismisses the reality that God does want refuges. Noah's Ark is the paradigmatic example just because Noah's, Noah in the Old Testament was called to build a refuge for him his wife his three sons and their wives that is meant to mean that Catholics around the world every single Catholic around the world needs three months supply of food and water and certain Catholics around the world have to build huge refuges so that the billion the remember there's a billion Catholics worldwide so we're going to need a lot of physical refuges. But of course, most of the world is going to die. So it's just like this little sect cult that's following Father Michel Rodrigue that has holy family statues in their house, that are his followers, etc., etc., that will be led to the physical refuges. It's crazy. Okay, back to the Ark thing. The Ark thing. The Ark of Noah. Global worldwide flood. flood only eight people surviving as a as a type of the baptism and, and and salvation through the church the ark thing was fulfilled in the church there's not gonna be there's nothing in public revelation to suggest that there's going to be another global worldwide flood in fact god said he'd never punish the world in that way again and you know just because something happened in the old testament does not mean that it has to be repeated again in later history like we had the exodus and the chosen people uh being led out of uh, egypt and all the firstborn of pharaoh dying is that gonna, is that going to happen as well is that going to happen in i don't know new york where um you know all the all the firstborn of those who are not catholics die and the catholics you know are able to go out to the refuges or something 
stupid. It, just because it happened in the Old Testament, this is not how we understand scripture. The idea of, oh, just because it happened once in the Old Testament means it's going to happen again in, the, in, in New Testament, post-New Testament history. That's not how, that's not how Christian, uh, how Christian in that interpretation of scripture works. Then they talk about another, a few instances in scripture where people um, preserved quantities for themselves to look after themselves in times of famine, etc. And notice again, in each of these, we, these were extraordinary acts of God in history. Almighty God himself spoke with Noah. Almighty God himself, not through some prophet, not through some intermediary. And the same with Joseph storing up the grain, etc. And Agabus, the prophet in the New Testament. Almighty God himself is dealing with them. And not through some prophet who's proved already to be extremely unreliable. Um, then we go through some more defense of refugees and at this point they decide to quote to quote popes and um, other individuals that themselves do not believe in refugees but they think oh you know we're gonna we're gonna quote these guys even though they don't agree with this so Pope Benedict they they talk about um, the woman the woman going out into the desert and Pope says yeah the woman represents the church who gives birth to Christ which gives birth to Christ in the desert um, and the woman fleeing into the wilderness means that that all oh, that means that the church has to flee into the wilderness and they quote St Francis de Sales because St Francis de Sales tells us that in the time of the Antichrist the church will be preserved in the wilderness for three and a half years yeah the time of the antichrist when there's no faith on earth just before the return of christ there's going to be a period where the church is completely destroyed and trickles of faith will survive in small pockets but saint francis de sale does not tell us go and stockpile up food in your house for three months and St Francis de Sale doesn't tell anyone to go and prepare already big compounds in the desert that are going to be able to hold thousands of people in fact he says the church shall be fed and preserved amidst the de deserts and solitudes to which she shall retire there's something miraculously providential about that it's not something that you need to plan for. And I think the way he would have imagined it is that the Antichrist's reign spreads really everywhere, except for a few little pockets, you know, in rural areas that, that it survives because the Antichrist's reign hasn't spread that far. It's not a mandate for, for a huge campaign of, of prepping. And then they get to the big one, what they consider to be, you know, the, the crucial text. Most notably, in contradiction to those who insist that physical safe havens are not found in sacred tradition, capital S, capital T, is the prophecy of early church father Lactantius regarding the lawless revolution that marks the coming of the Antichrist. Yeah, so Lactantius says that when there's basically a real breakdown in society and things are really tough earth shall be laid waste as though by one common robbery when these things shall happen then the righteous and followers of the truth shall separate themselves from the wicked and flee into solitudes look at the full text of lactantius when he hears of this the impious king inflamed inflamed with anger will come with a great army and bring up all his forces so will surround all the mountain in which the righteous shall be situated so in Lactantius's prophecy that they're so proud of the righteous are just in one mountain not cabins um, all over the USA and Europe and probably Australia you know it's it's not um, it's not like that it's not like that it's Lactantius here is imagining one place where they have shut themselves up and then Lactantius adds, they'll call on God with a loud voice and God will hear them and send from heaven a great king to rescue and free them and destroy all the wicked with fire 
and sword. Lactantius, if you haven't noticed here, this great king is our Lord himself, because Lactantius subscribes to the heresy of millennialism, the idea that our Lord himself is going to return and establish a thousand year reign. So Countdown to the Kingdom, as their big number one go-to guy, has the heretic, or posh, a heretic Lactantius, with his millennialism, is their basis for refuges, uh, solitudes, and they ignore the fact that Lactantius is saying there's one mountain where people are going to be kind of hanging around with their little, little little solitudes around this one mountain. Lactantius, what does the church say about Lactantius? The strengths and weaknesses of Lactantius are nowhere to be shown in his work. The beauty of the style, the choice and aptness of terminology cannot hide the author's lack of grasp of Christian principles and his almost utter ignorance of scripture. St. Jerome adds another scathing comment on Lactantius. St. Jerome says that he is um, a heretic. A heretic is unreliable and we should not be using Lactantius to defend our arguments. Countdown to the Kingdom pretends Lactantius is this almighty go-to church father, but he ain't. He is considered, he's not, he's not called Saint Lactantius for a very good reason. <laughs> and yet he's their go-to guy for proving to us the prophecy of the refuge. And again, it shows the fact that Countdown to the Kingdom and a lot of these so-called Catholic prophets are more and more promoting false millennialism. The idea of a physical thousand year reign of Christ, which has been condemned by the church as an error. The end of times is going to be persecution, total destruction of the church, almost total destruction of the church. Then glorious return of Christ and judgment of the world. That's how it works. That's what the Catechism says. That's what the Church has come to understand as the broad brush view of the end times. The broad brush has been slightly complicated by Fatima. Fatima says that there's a that there's a kind of persecution of the Church, consecration to the Immaculate Heart, then period of peace. Uh, after the period of peace, sometime. And in Fatima, generally Fatima scholars understand so quite some time later. Reign of the Antichrist, complete destruction of the church, then return of Christ to destroy the Antichrist and judge the living and the dead. That's that's the, the Catholic chronology, not this refuges, not the thousand year reign of Christ on earth. That is that is Protestant error. And now I want to get back to another point about refuges and even the stockpiling of food. Three months supply of food, which I showed earlier, costs about $2,000. Almighty God demands this of us. Would Almighty God command something that is essentially impossible to a huge number of humanity? <laughs> you know, I've got on this website on the World Food Program, there are one in nine of the world's population who do not have enough to eat on a daily basis one in nine on a daily basis and almighty god is saying that we all need three months supply of food and countdown of the kingdom have the goal the goal to suggest that this is prudent for each one of us to have three months supply of food and water only the bourgeois, middle-class, wealthy can have the gall to suggest, oh yeah, by the way, just get, yeah, no problem, it's prudent, have three months supply of food. <laughs> Do you realise that even in America, even in Great Britain, there's loads of people that do not have enough food planned for the end of the week, let alone three months. They've got overdrafts to make sure that they have food for the rest of the month till payday. And they think that it's prudent and Almighty God wants us to have three months supply of food. That is not Almighty God. That is not the heart of our Father. That is, that is a false and evil, false and evil advice from a materialistic individual that seems to think that at a, at a click of a button, at a drop of a hat, all of us can have three months supply of food. And some people, 
Some people have to get us three and a half years worth of food. This is so evil and it's so against scripture. When we look at Luke chapter 12, when we look at Luke chapter 12, you see this, you know, do not fear those who kill the body and after they have nothing more than, than that they can do. Fear him rather who can cast body and soul into hell. Their priorities about this whole prepping thing, the three and a half years, it betrays, it betrays a complete lack of trust in God's providence, a complete disobedience to the spirit of scripture, which encourages us not to build bigger barns and and establish on earth, you know, like this rich man who had plentiful foods. Where do I store my crops? I'll build bigger barns. I'll have ample goods laid up for many years to relax, eat, drink, be merry, while the rest of the world has a reign of the Antichrist and two thirds of the world die. And God says to him, fool, this night your soul is required for you. And those things you prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure himself and is not rich towards God. Do not be anxious about your life, what you eat, your body, what you'll put on. He go, Almighty God goes on to talk about divine providence. Provide yourself with money bags that do not grow old. Treasure in heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches, no moth destroys. There your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We need to be, the Son of Man will come in an hour you do not expect. Almighty God Almighty God's presentation is that we need to live good and holy lives. That should be our focus, not material storing up bigger barns for some global uh, global chastisement. We need to live holy lives. And if you have extra money, that extra money you need to use to build up treasure in heaven to relieve the suffering of that one in nine of the world's population who do not have enough food to eat today. The scandal of all that food being rotting and wasting in Father Michelle's compound in Southern California. The scandal of that when one in nine of the world's population do not have food for even this day or have hardly any food for even this day. You know, it may be that we cannot in the US, in the UK, do much about world hunger but we can do a lot about our local communities and in our local communities that if you god has blessed you financially there's plenty of things in your local community that you can use your blessings to share with others community projects even in your church maybe the church roof needs repairing maybe a minibus is needed to get the housebound to be able to come to mass Maybe you need to help with a local school, maybe a homeschooling federation, maybe a convent, maybe a food bank. There's so many local community projects that we can all help with to help people in our area. The last thing we should be doing as Catholics is spending our money building compounds, expensive compounds, even the storing three months of food. That is the last thing that we should look to do with our spare money. There's so many good works that we should be doing and ought to be doing. We should not be we should not be following the advice of Father Michel Rodrigue. Our Lord said to the rich young man, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions, give to the poor. You will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. That should be our slogan for our spare money. It's so difficult for a rich person to enter into heaven. But it's easy if that rich person is generous and gives and blesses others through the way that the Lord has blessed them. Almighty God says that in our life, if anyone wants to follow him, he has to deny himself, take up his cross and follow him. The one who wants to save his life will lose it. The one who loses his life for my sake, he will find it. If there's some terrible global revolution and loads of us get killed and loads of us die you know almighty god is actually saying you're going to be blessed to suffer for my sake in that global rev revolution i don't want you to be one of the ones who seeks to save your life you know that's i want you to be the one that loses it for my sake that's what he's saying and furthermore all this stuff about about 
refuges. It's all false prophecy anyway. Because Father Michel has already been proved to be a liar, a false prophet, from the fact that he said it all last year and it didn't come to pass. I bet there's so many out people out there who are worried by this refugee stuff and are worried about collecting three months supply of food and water. Almighty God does not want you to have three months of supply of food and water in your house. He does not ask that of you because it's not a rule that he's imposing on the whole of humanity. How cruel Almighty God would be if he was expecting everyone across the world to have three months supply of food and water. It's an impossible commandment. It's an impossible requirement from God. And, and an impossible requirement like that is not from God. It is from the evil one. The Immaculate Heart is our only refuge. The road that will lead us to God. The Immaculate Heart of you as your refuge. Think about what that meant for the children of Fatima. It meant that they gave their food away to the poor child from the village. And they went hungry. And they prayed the rosary, they put their heads to the ground and repeated the prayers of the angel, and they did penance for, for the conversion of sinners. They did not build, they were not on some prepping mission. They were focused on doing penance for sinners. They were focused on helping the poor child in their village. That's what it is to have your refuge as the Immaculate Heart. I hope that everyone who wants to be a true soldier of Mary, a true servant of Our Lady, will follow the example of the children of Fatima, not the example of Father Michel Rodrigue, who's proved to be an evil false prophet. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.